I will tell you maybe a funny story. So Jim Rainier called me up to, to his office and he said, I'm about to go to the board, we're about to do this thing, and I'm planning to recommend to the board that um, you become vice president and take over this area. And I said, that sounds like a good idea. And he said, I have a problem, though. And I said, what's the problem? And he said, I have several board members who will not vote for a vice president who has a beard. I said, really? And he said, absolutely not. They're very conservative. They're very old-fashioned. Um, and they uh, just will have a very, very hard time voting yes for VP of the beard. So I said, what do you think I should do? And he said, I think you should decide. And I said, how much time do I have? And he reached into his drawer, and he pulled out a can of shaving cream and a razor and a white towel. And he said, my bathroom is right there. You can shave now, or we'll give the job to somebody else. Wow. So I said, easy enough, went in and shaved and lost my beard and um, didn't have it for a number of years after that. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, and, and the really funny thing was the look on my secretary's face when <laughs> I came back downstairs from a meeting with the president. I'd gone up with a full beard and <laughs> I came back clean shaven. <laughs> But I bet you would have looked even younger then, too. Right? Oh, yeah. No, the, the beard was actually helping. Yeah, the beard was making me look a little older. So, yeah, I think that beards today don't necessarily have that same connotation, right? But it, was it that, uh, that it, it looked a little countercultural? Yeah, they were, were afraid, they're, they're afraid that I might be a dangerous radical of some kind. So, yeah. Interesting. So they, um, by the beard went away. Mm -hmm. And then a really good friend of mine, very wise man, um, told me to start wearing pinstripes. And he said, because I was wearing tweeds and sweaters and that type of thing. And he said, uh, you need to have people think you think like them so that they will go along with what you recommend. Mm -hmm. And if they think you're different, they won't follow your lead. So I said this, and I said, what? What's the best way to do that? He said, the best way to do that is to wear pinstripe suits because they really, really think that you think like that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, that's easy enough to do. And so I went to pinstripe suits, and I actually wore pinstripe suits for about 30 years because of that. And I'm just now, as I'm leaving this job, not wearing pinstripe. David, how many times have you seen me not in a pinstripe suit? Tiny. I mean, in fact, if I would have if I would have known yeah. that we were filming today, I would have um, worn a pinstripe suit. Yeah. But um, but Bill was right, and and what he was right was that if you if you come in clean shaven, wearing a pinstripe suit, white shirt, and the whole thing, then right off the bat, people assume mm -hmm. that you're a safe and conventional thinker. So, you know, maybe they would have uh, 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 assumed that you weren't if you had. You know, mm -hmm. come in wearing, uh, you know, you look like a professor, or, you know, a, a, a poet. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it, to what extent do you, looking back, you know, to the early 1970s when you're first starting to enter into these conversations with people, to what extent do you think that um, they would have been right in their suspicions uh, if you had appeared, you know, looking like a poet? Meaning, you know, was it a necessary cloak for you to wear? Was it actually hiding something? Well, it wasn't hiding something because, um, I mean, I, I put together the first network, capitated network plan, I think, in the country. If it wasn't the first, it was uh, simultaneously the first. Mm -hmm. So I invented that plan. I invented a, a new dental plan. I, I invented prepaid legal care. I actually started a prepaid legal plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, we sold uh, legal services on a, a prepaid basis um, and invented the first prepaid um, workers' comp plan. 
Uh, we actually took over workers' comp uh, medical coverage and did it on a prepaid basis mm -hmm. in partnership with a, uh, a commercial indemnity plan. And, and so I've invented half a dozen different products over the years. Um, but I, I'm not um, sneaking up on anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's not as though I, there's a secret agenda that I'm pursuing. When, I, when I'm doing a, a prepaid legal plan, I'm putting it on the table in front of I got the governor to sign a bill to make, the, to make it legal, uh, to sell prepaid legal services. And, and um, so it, it's not like there was a secret to me that um, the, what, what the pinstripe suit in the lack of a beard allowed me to do was to be transparent, not secretive.